Hey folks, James Abrinio coming to you from Abrinio Law, your Northern Virginia personal injury and criminal defense law firm. In this video, I want to talk about a question I get a lot in the context of domestic assault and domestic violence charges. Um, it doesn't have to do with the person accused of a crime. It actually has to do with the person that has initiated or caused a charge to go against another individual. Let's say they've reported a domestic violence charge. They said they've been assaulted by their significant other or by their parent or, or child. Um, and they, uh, whether it's misrepresentation to law enforcement or they've now, for whatever reason, chosen not to go forward, they want to know, James, do I have to testify? What are my rights? Um, what can I do to have the charge dismissed? Uh, can I just tell uh, the, uh, the prosecutor that I want to go forward? So this is a very sensitive question, a very sensitive topic. Oftentimes, I represent individuals accused of a crime as the defense attorney, and this question will come from the complaining witnesses in the case, whether it's a husband or wife or son and daughter. And they'll and when I'm talking to them, they'll say to me, hey, I don't want the case to go forward. Number one, what I want you to be clear about is the individual uh, defense attorney representing the person that's accused of the domestic assault or domestic violence uh, charge doesn't represent you if you're a complaining witness. That attorney is not there in order to tell you what you can and can't do. That attorney is not there and should not be there telling you, um, uh, giving you legal advice as to what you should be doing in a case, particularly if it's how to get the case dropped. Um, in fact, that kind of communication oftentimes can make the situation worse. Well, why is that, James? Well, when it comes to domestic violence charges and domestic assault charges, we all have to recognize that domestic violence is a real issue. Um, there's a lot of pain, suffering, injury, death that comes from domestic violence. There's a lot of situations where there is an abusive household where you have a domestic abuser that assaults the uh, abused. And then when the case gets prosecuted, they're forcing that abused person not to testify or they're trying to influence their ability to go forward. There are also instances where the abused person, for whatever reason, um, and I'm not judging here. Um, I'm not going to try to pretend I can understand what it li is like to be and sit in the eyes of a person subject to abuse. Um, but for whatever reason, they choose to not want to prosecute even if the abuser has not said that to them. And it's really tragic situations. There's an epidemic here in Virginia. There's an epidemic across the country and I imagine across the globe of, of uh, uh, domestic uh, abuse. So that context has to be well appreciated in any criminal prosecution of domestic violence, whether it's not here in, in Virginia or across the states or across the globe, I, I suspect. So if you're a complaining witness and you've chosen for whatever reason that you don't want to go forward, inherently in many instances, a prosecutor is going to look at that situation and be concerned that there's concern for domestic violence. And either you're being manipulated not to testify or for whatever reason you've chosen not to testify because of the trauma that you've uh, went through and, and all that. And so they're going to be hesitant simply to choose to drop the case because a complaining witness doesn't want to go forward. And I've been doing defense work for a long time. Um, I've also represented complaining witnesses and victims in these cases. I also do personal injury represent victims of negligence and, and intentional injuries. Um, so I can understand and appreciate the concern that a prosecutor would and frankly should have. Um, and to disrespect that concern and disabuse it, I think, is, is not realistic. It's also not smart um, if you're trying to navigate these complicated waters, okay? Um, so with that being said, um, you as a complaining witness have a right to your own counsel. You have a right to talk to an attorney, be advised. Um, you have a right to uh, be told your rights by your own counsel who's not represented by or representing the person that's opposed to you, uh, the complaint, the, the accused person. Um, so even when I serve as a role of a defense attorney, whenever I speak to a complaining witness, I want to be clear to them that they don't even have to speak to me. You as a complaining witness aren't required to talk to anybody. Um, you're not even required to talk to the prosecutor, frankly. 
Um, but the accused attorney can't compel you to speak. They shouldn't be threatening you. Uh, frankly, as defense counsel, I've been doing this for 15 years. If a defense attorney is threatening to speak with you, that's a real issue. Uh, and you need to let that be known to a prosecutor. Um, in fact, in many instances, what I will, I always kind of have a spill when I serve as defense counsel to, that I give to every complaining witness. I don't represent you. You don't have to speak to me. I'm simply trying to get the facts. I don't want you to interpret anything I'm saying is what you should and shouldn't do. Um, and, uh, uh, that that's the way it should go. I think ultimately, if your goal is to have the case disposed of and, and not prosecuted, um, that kind of behavior is the kind of behavior you're going to want to see from a defense attorney. Because if a prosecutor gets wind that a defense attorney or a defendant is behaving or an accused is behaving in an inappropriate manner, they're going to be more defensive as well. Now, the other thing is, is you have to recognize that uh, kind of going back to the concern about domestic abuse, just because you want the case dropped doesn't mean that it's going to be dropped. In fact, there are many instances where a prosecutor uh, can force you to testify. They can grant you immunity and compel you to testify. Um, and so um, you you have a right to counsel to help navigate what your options are. Um, recently, as of late, uh, at least here in Northern Virginia, uh, I've seen a new phenomenon where it's a non-intimate domestic violence cases. Let's say a, a sister and sister that live apart, so they're not you know, cohabitating and things like that, uh, where the Commonwealth attorney has chosen not to be involved in these cases. And so I've seen instances where the judge, the particular judge will feel that they have a duty to force the case to go forward. Then you as a complaining witness without counsel are kind of left, left to make your own legal decisions. So um, if you have any questions about what your rights are as a complaining witness, as a victim, um, however you characterize yourself, if you're the individual that has initiated a criminal uh, charge against an individual, a domestic violence charge, or the, the prosecutor or the police officer has initiated against your will, you have a right to speak to your own attorney. You have a right to be advised of your rights, um, and you have a right to have your voice heard. Wh whether or not ultimately the outcome is going to be the one that you want, that's going to be for your attorney to help you navigate through, and there's no guarantees of anything. Um, anytime you're involved in, in criminal courts, you have to take it very, very seriously. Um, and so uh, the vi this video is really just to let you know you have a right to an attorney. You have a right to your own attorney, uh, and you're not required to do what any other attorney tells you to do. Again, a prosecutor can compel you to testify or a judge can compel you to testify, but you have a right to at least be advised of those unique circumstances. So um, if you have any other questions about criminal uh, law here in Virginia, you can check out our website, www.abriniolaw.com. Um, I would recommend, though, if you have any questions about your own rights, look, you may be watching this video and you want it absolutely prosecuted. You have a right to that as well. OK, so you also have a right in those instances to speak to an attorney and be advised of your rights. So I would recommend you call attorneys. Uh, most people, most attorneys here in Northern Virginia will do free consultation. So I think it's worth your time and effort. Uh, and uh, I, I hope this video was useful, um, whether or not you're a complaining witness or you're accused. So you can at least understand a bit more how the, the system works. And every s case is different. Um, there's no broad rule for everything. It just everybody has a right to speak to their own attorney and be advised of the rights. So hopefully you found this useful. I wish you the best.